the numbers are wrong. Good afternoon. Sisters, brethren, Church of God, which is the Church of the Living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. Get your authorized version of the scriptures and read along with me what we're going to be looking at today. It's kind of a hard video to do today. Um, King Saul. Oh, there was so much potential for King Saul. But King Saul had a problem. He was more concerned with how he looked and that Adamic nature was something that was that was within him that he never really really dealt with. In 1 Samuel 15. <laughs> 1 Samuel 15, verses, uh, uh, let me see, hold on one second. <laughs> Sorry about that, I was looking right at it. Verses 20 and 21 in 1 Samuel 15. And Saul said unto Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord, and have gone the way which the Lord sent me, and have brought Agag, the king of Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. <laughs> Samuel asked, and it's like, well, what meaneth this bleating that I hear and whatnot? Okay? But verse 21, King Saul, instead of taking responsibility and accountability for himself, as king, okay, what does he do? But the people took of the spoil, sheep and oxen, the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed, the sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gilgal. The separation that he's doing there to justify himself. I did what I was commanded, but the people to whom he was king over... They did the, see the Adamic nature there. The woman that thou gavest me to be with, she did give me of the tree, and yeah, I did eat. So it's your fault, her fault, and yeah, okay, I, I messed up a little. That's the Adamic nature. The old man, which needs to be crucified on a daily basis. Okay? All right? The old man is here. But the new man, that hidden man of the heart, the Lord Jesus Christ, is what needs to be worked out on a daily basis. Not to save yourself or to stay saved. Stay saved. The Lord has sealed you with himself. We are to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. What the Lord has put in himself to work out as ambassadors for Christ. Verses 24 and verse 31. And Saul said unto Samuel. Okay, and Samuel rebuked Saul, and Saul kind of like, oh, shucks. And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and thy words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. See, right there in verse 24 shows you that that Adamic nature within Saul never got dealt with. Why? Because, I mean, you look at how David reacted with the child brought about in adultery. David's like, I've sinned. I messed up. Saul, I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and thy words because justifying himself. I feared the people and obeyed their voice. See, he never never dealt with it. Never got rid of it. Okay? That that verse 24 there, brother, sister, look at that verse. Look at that verse within comparison to verses 20 and 21. Oh, brethren, you run into some of these Christians who you can give 
truth. You can, the Lord through you will verify the truth of Scripture onto them. And they seem that they want that truth, that they want that. But what happens? That old man that's never really been dealt with in the Christian. Sad. And brother, this is something that you're going to have. This is, this is something you're going to be looking forward to in the future. So pay attention. This doesn't get easier. And if you got some half-wit twit coming around saying that it does get easier the longer you go, they're lying. And I would have a lot of questions of um, on whom they believe. Verse 25. Now therefore I pray thee, pardon my sin. And turn again with me, that I may worship the Lord. And Samuel said unto Saul, I will not return with thee, for thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord hath rejected thee from being king over Israel. And as Samuel turned about to go away, he laid hold upon the skirt of his mantle and rent it. And Samuel said unto him, The Lord hath rent the kingdom of Israel from thee this day, and hath given it to a neighbor of thine that is better than thou. And also the strength of Israel will not lie nor repent, for he is not a man that he should repent. Because God doesn't sin. God can't sin. God never sin. Now pay attention. In the light of that judgment... In the light of that prophecy, good old Saul, which is also a picture for our instruction in righteousness onto so many of these Christians who you give the truth to, that the Lord through the scriptures, through you, the saints, expound verse by verse, word by word, scripture with scripture, Proving the heresy, the lie that they want. And then it's like you see them, <coughs> you see them returning to their vomit again. And it's like, dude, what is it? What, what are you doing? Verse 30, then he said, I have sinned. I have sinned. This is Saul speaking. Look at his response. This is resident in so many of these Christians. Brother, you're going to reach a point when you're, you, the Lord opens doors and you think that headway is being made. And it's like you see a brother, a brother who you love and care about. And it's like, okay, wow. It, it, Eyes are being opened. The dude is real life. Whoa, this, this stuff that I was messed up with is heresy. I need to stay away from it. Yet, honor me now, I pray thee, before the elders of my people and before Israel, and turn again with me that I may worship the Lord thy God. Look at that verse. Saul never, ever overcame that. That old man. Now, if you have been truly saved, broken of your self-righteousness, can try taking responsibility for what you have done. Fearing the Lord and calling upon His name and He saves you. You're once saved, always saved, sealed. But see, our spirit and soul are housed in this where sin is. Flesh. Yes, the thought of foolishness is sin. Yes. But scripture plainly proves that sin has been relegated to the sagging sin suit. And when you see this mentality 
exhibited in someone who you love, who you've prayed for, and you think the Lord has finally, you know, gotten through to that individual. Verse 31, So Samuel turned again after Saul, and Saul worshipped the Lord. Skip to verses 34 and 35. Then Samuel went to Ramah, and Saul went up to his house to Gebeah of Saul. And Samuel came no more to see Saul until the day of his death. Nevertheless, Samuel mourned for Saul, and the Lord repented that he had made Saul king over Israel. Chapter 16, verse 1. And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long wilt thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? A line horn with oil and go, and go. Move on. Move on. I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. Move on. Move on. You know what, brother? You'll, you'll find this out, trust me. If, if the Lord will, you know. It doesn't get easy. It doesn't get easier, I should say. When you see someone that you love, that you have prayed for, that uh, collectively, personally, wept for, the Lord has given truth to that individual, and yet, at the end of the day, they still go back. I mean, we, we make mistakes. We make mistakes all the time unless you're some perfect imbecile from England or something like that. And do you English brethren, I'm, I'm, I'm meaning a certain individual. Um, we make mistakes every day. We sin every day. But see, the saints... Do you like the taste of your own puke? Proverbs 11. One verse. Proverbs 11. Just one, just one verse. Yesterday, the Lord opened up quite a few things. Verse 29. Tossed with the wind. Tossed with the wind. He that troubleth his own house shall inherit the wind. And the fool, who says in his heart there is no God, except to himself, shall be servant to the wise of heart. Troubleth his own house shall inherit the wind. Look at verse 28. He that trusteth in his riches shall fall, but the righteous shall flourish as a branch. Mm. Riches does not always mean do re mi. No, it can mean possessions, companionship, fellowship, I, you know, some of you Christians put way too much value upon fellowship. The fellowship of the saints is glorious, beautiful, a treasure, precious, and every time that the saints get it, it's, it's, it's a jewel. It's precious. Yes, it is. But at the end of the day, every one of us will give an account 
of himself to the Lord. I'm not against, don't, don't misunderstand me. I love fellowship with the brethren. I love when I am able to speak with the brethren of uh, Skype. Oh, they come over. I get to go to them. See, see one another. Speak with each other. Whatever we have, it's precious. But see, there are some out there who devils know that some of the saints are lonely and that they are willing to have fellowship with pond scum just in order to have any, uh, any kind of contact is good, right? Hey, at least it's contact. It's with a venomous dog serpent, but hey... See, some of them put way too much value upon that when the fellowship first needs to be between you and the Lord and then that will condescend onto the brethren. You see how that works? I have seen so many of these Christians just return to their own tasty vomit and hurt themselves all for the sake of getting along. All for the sake of this thing, this warped delusion that they have of what they think love is. In this spirit of forgiveness and love. And as a, as a saint, what, 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 what can we do? You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make the horse drink it. Even if you take, what is it, what is it a switch, right? Or and you go, boom, and whack him upside the head. He that troubleth his own house shall inherit the wind. And the fool shall be servant to the wise of heart. You need to be careful with whom we align ourselves. Ephesians 4, Ephesians 4, verses 13 on to verse 16, Ephesians 4, verses 13 on to verse 16. You'll, you'll never get used to this, brother. You'll never get used to it. But also, too, you got to beware about getting hardened over it. Because, see... What can happen is you can get hurt so many times that you will refrain from doing anything. But see, what happens if we don't try? Nothing. And in a position such as this, or whatever it is, sometimes you have to take that chance. Or else, what happens? Nothing. Ephesians 4, 13 on verse 16. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Unity of the faith. We will, saints, all saints who genuinely saved will eventually come into that unity. See, we ought to be like-minded because we have one mind, you know, on our Father. We don't have the literal mind of Jesus, okay? If we did, that's, that's kind of like likening it with that twits, uh, the faith you have is Jesus' faith. If we had the literal mind of Jesus, then why do these thoughts come into our heads? Remember, Jesus never had a wicked thought. God the Father never had a wicked thought. The thought of foolishness is sin. Okay? But there are brethren out there who I don't get along with, and they don't get along with me. I think they're saved, some of them. Not all of them, obviously. But they, they, they want to worship a man. They want to worship their traditions. And they love the praises of men more than the praises of God. 
or what have you. And as we have seen in Acts chapter 15, between Paul and Barnabas, two saved men, who had a headbutton contest over a doctrinal issue. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. You read Acts 15 on your own time. Yes, it was doctrinal. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Okay? Was it a, was it a salvific issue? No. No. Mark at that time was not trustworthy. And you can read because uh, Paul was sent forth in the grace of God, whereas Barnabas, you don't hear anything about. So you see scripturally that the Lord favored Paul's um, view on that thing more so than Barnabas, even though Mark would eventually, by Paul, be like, hey, bring him with because he's profitable unto the ministry. Mark would eventually grow into that. But until then, Verse 14. That we henceforth be no more children. Children. Hold your place. 1 Corinthians 13. <laughs> Very interesting, right? And it's charity. Charity and love are two totally different things. <laughs> totally different. Charity is self-sacrifice. You can have self-sacrifice without any love. You can have love without any self-sacrifice. It's like some twit tried to tell you that liberty and charity were the same thing. Which wrought a huge consequence upon that idiot um, for trying to teach something so erroneously obvious heretically. Heret uh, heretical, excuse me. Okay. But a good boy, you know. Anyway, anyway. First Corinthians 13, verse 11. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. It's full of wonder that there are people, actual saints, who could remain in a novice, babe-like mentality for the rest of their days until the redemption of the purchased possession. I, 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 that's possible. It is very possible. It is very possible. Because you have to make choices. You have to make choices. And there are some saints who don't want to grow up. I remember Ruckman was like, I ain't going to grow up, I'll grow old. Yeah. Yeah, we won't, we won't go any further with that. Okay? We won't go any further with that. But associating with people who you've been informed, who the Lord through the scriptures has even informed you that you need to stay away from them. But yet, there you are, right in the midst of it, and reveling in it. That we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine. By the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the mwah, 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 Kisses of an enemy are deceitful. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, for whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working in the measure of every part maketh the increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Love. Not this sapper, sappy, a splendor, sweet nonsense. But genuine love. Based on truth. Acts 
chapter 17. Acts chapter 17. And here we get into a little of the problem, the cause of all. Okay? You know, there, I mean, there's one thing to be curious, it is, but take, let us take an example of the Athenians. Acts 17, verses 16 under 21. Now while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred in him when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. There is a saint, you know. Our spirits are stirred when we see everything given over to idolatry. And remember, idolatry is always, like for example, someone will uh, make an idol out of a statue, out of a holiday. <laughs> out of a holiday. Out of a tradition. Out of a principle. Out of a man. Idolatry is always an extension of the true idol themselves. Never forget that. Never forget that. Never forget that. You want it because you want it. You want it because it feels good. huh? You're delivered to do these things, right? All things are lawful for you. Closet antinomian. <laughs> Antinomianism, free grace, is deadly satanic heresy. It's cancer. It's poison. It's toxic. It's venom. But you know what it does? It gratifies the flesh. And it makes you feel good. Therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout persons in the market daily with them that met with him. Then certain philosophers of the Epicurean uh, Epic, Epicureans Epicureans. I don't have a uh, um, uh, what do you call a thing in this set of scriptures, okay? And of the Stoics encountered him. And some said, What will this babbler say? Others, some. He seemed to be a set forth of strange gods because he preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection. And they took him and brought him unto the Areopagus, saying, May we know what this new doctrine whereof thou speakest is? For thou bringest certain strange things to our ears. We would know therefore what these things mean. For all the Athenians and strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. Oh, and in these, these live-streaming Christian antinomious pond scum, you see this, they, there's this bandwagon mentality. One guy over here will do something, and then they all jump on this bandwagon. And, I mean, it's, it's obvious. And you can see it. The one, and they're all, the link is that they're all these antinomists. That's what they are. And they all, the one will do a video, then another, then another, then another, then another, another, then it will go down the line. Because why? They're gossips. <laughs> For all the Athenians and strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. It's happened to me. Okay, it's happened to me, it's happened to others, where you'll come out with truth from Scripture. The Lord, through the Scriptures, will use you to bring out truth. Then the next thing you know, one guy's like, oh! It's because it's against their satanic little antinomious um, free grace disgusting theology, which is of the devil, okay, Satan. They have God said, okay? But it offends their little precious satanic doctrine, and they're like, oh, 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 oh. And then one makes a video, and then another, then another, then another, then another, and then it goes down the line like that. Hmm. Hmm. 
Have you not seen it? And it's resident in these antinomianists, free gracers, in that mentality. I do not believe that any true antinomianist, antinomianist, well, however, I don't care if I'm mispronouncing it. I don't care. It's of Satan. It's disgusting. I do not believe that one single antinomianist is a saved individual. I don't. <laughs> it's funny. You know, they, there was this thing that these that whole group got involved in with this one putz making a list, but yet <laughs> there's this a certain bloke of Blackpool who himself is doing the same thing making a list. Hey, 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 dude, you want to have fellowship with that guy? <laughs> Go right ahead. And uh, just remember, when that dog bites you again, which he will, I have no compassion or pity for you now on that. None. You deserve it. I, I know that's harsh. And I wish you wouldn't say it like that, but if you're going to continually return to that, you deserve what you get. Ecclesiastes 11. Ecclesiastes 11. Verses 4 on to verse 6. Ecclesiastes 11. <laughs> 4 on to 6. He that observeth, observeth the wind shall not sow, and he that regardeth the clouds shall not reap. Observeth the wind, every wind of doctrine, by the sight of men. As thou knowest not what is the way of the spirit, nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child, even so thou knowest not the works of God, who maketh all. Instruction for us, saints, when dealing with people who observe the wind and regard the clouds. In the morning sow thy seed. That's, that's what we do as saints. And in the evening withhold not thine hand. It's not this eat and drink for tomorrow we die, no. We go forward and trust in the Lord that the Lord will germinate that seed. But remember, remember, he doesn't do it by gunpoint. For thou knowest not whether shall prosper, either this or that, or whether they both shall be alike good. All we can do is plant seed. And as the Lord will lead and guide, that's all we can do. It's not always up to us, God forbid, to do the saving. We talked about that yesterday, I think. Okay? And when you come across someone who you love, prayed for, the Lord has, you know, here, give him this, give him this, give him this, and yet, they, they still want to go back to it. James 1. James 1. James 1. Verses 5 on to verse 8. If any of you lack wisdom, the fear of the Lord, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally. He doesn't give everyone the fear of the Lord, <laughs> though everyone will fear the Lord. Okay, they will. You all will. Okay. But see, in context, any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. See, the lesser calling on the greater is something that these antinomianist pond scum is just so abhorrent to them because they are the greater calling on the lesser, their little G God. That giveth to all men liberally and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. 
Now these guys will claim, and they do, they have faith. But what is the faith in? We've proved, that we've proved this this week, without a doubt. Antinomianist, the free gracer, their faith is in their actual faith. They have twisted what the scriptures say because unto the antinomianist it's by faith <laughs> through God's grace. It's by grace through faith. But to them it's by faith through grace. They mess it up. They twist it. Yea, hath God said. See, it's dependent upon you. So, what is your faith in? Is it really in Jesus? Which one? The, the three-person one? Yeah. Uh. But let him ask in faith nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. It, I, I can't understand it. I can't. How? Okay, forgiveness is one thing. Forgive and forget. But yet, you're going to go to these devils and open yourself up to them and be all lovey-dovey with these devils? That's what Jesus would do. Uh, th that's what your fake Jesus would do. Not the Jesus who is. He will event, you know, the Lord will be like, okay, let his hand off until they make the choice to come back. God doesn't force you to do anything. But let him ask in faith nothing wavering. For he, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the sin, wind and tossed. I wanted to go to the lukewarm reference in Revelation, either hot or cold. But see, when you are dealing with someone in this kind of a situation, they are not truly lukewarm. Even though in every aspect they uh, appear to be. But in reality, they're not. There are a lot, a lot of the Christians are, you know, look for gray matter. Absolutely. But there are some out there who put on that facade of being gray, either, not either or, but in the middle, but yet they have made a choice. Like uh, uh, Neil Park even said, if you choose not to decide, you still have made a choice. And that came from a lost guy who's in hell. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Isaiah 22. Isaiah 22. Verses 12 on to verse 14. Isaiah 22. Verses 12. On to verse 14. And in that day did the Lord God of hosts call to weeping and to mourning and to baldness and to girding with sackcloth. And behold, joy and gladness, slaying oxen and killing sheep, eating flesh and drinking wine. Let us eat and drink for tomorrow we shall die. Live it up. Live it up. Stay away from these things. Stay, you, you've been instructed in the way of truth. But yet, you're still going to go back to it and revel in it. And here's the tragic part of all of it. Verse 14. And this applies today for those of us saints who have bad habits that we know we shouldn't. And it was revealed in mine ears by the Lord of hosts. 
Surely this iniquity shall not be purged from you till ye die, saith the Lord God of hosts. And what ought to scare the hell out of you is what if it becomes to deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. What if the Lord has handed you over that you may die? Because you've gotten so far and you're a saint. See, this happens. This happens, okay? This happens. Second Peter, chapter 2. Remember about he who observes the wind? Okay, uh, before we do that, let's go, uh, let's refresh our memory in Ecclesiastes 11. Let's refresh our memory on that. Okay, Ecclesiastes 11. Ver, uh, what, what was the verse? Uh, he that observeth the wind shall not sow. He that regardeth the clouds shall not reap. <laughs> and you know what? In verse 3, if the clouds be full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. And if the tree fall toward the south or toward the north, in the place where the tree falleth, there it shall be. Now think about that. Clouds. Do what? They're full of rain. And they empty themselves on the earth, giving nourishment and sustenance. Okay? And if the tree, if the tree fall toward the south or toward the north, up or down, get it? In the place where the tree falleth, there it shall be. I'll let you roll that around in your head for a little bit. Second Peter chapter 2. Second Peter chapter 2. Verses 17 on to the close. These are wells without water, clouds that are carried away with the tempest, with every wind of doctrine. All they're about is looking for, seeking, wanting to hear something new. And then everyone gets on this bandwagon. To whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. They have eyes to see, but their minds have been blinded. Mm. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lusts of the flesh, through much wantonness. Talk about a good verse that describes antinomianism. Free grace, which has several of you snared. Those that were clean escaped from them who live in error. While they promised them liberty, the antinomianist, yeah, just believe and receive and live your life, hey, blah, 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 guiding you to hell and you love it. They themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought in bondage. And I see you overcome. You're still in bondage. Are you made perfect now by the flesh? You know who you are, if you see this. For if, after they have escaped the pollutions of the world 
through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Knowledge, head knowledge. They are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. Oh, all you Christians who have heard the truth, who have heard of the true Christ Jesus given to you from the authorized version of the scripture, the God who is, true salvation, heard it but you want that which tickles your ears gratifies your flesh makes you feel good all your friends are going to be there too and you think they're your friends they are again entangled therein and overcome the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. See, see, you, you Christians who aren't taught to rightly divide the word of truth believe in one God that is of three persons. You believe the satanic nonsense of antinomianism, which is a daughter of Catholicism. You know that saying, ignorance is bliss? For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb. And I, I to this day, have seen this. dog has turned to his own vomit again. And the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. You must love the taste of your own puke. What do you do? What do you do? What can we do? Revelation 22. Verse 11, it's not, it's not funny, it's tragic. It's really sad. It's heartbreaking. But then again, we have free will. And you want to ignore the facts, you want to ignore the truth, and that be part of a little clique that will betray you and doesn't even have the truth, the, uh, another Jesus and another gospel, and you want to, you know, this false love of yours, Revelation 22, verse 11. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. That's what we can do, brethren. And it hurts. It, it, it does. It, it really does. And, and brother, you'll find this out eventually. It does. But, you know, that's all we can do. Just leave him alone. Jeremiah 5. Jeremiah 5. We're going to kind of piecemeal this with some extremely light, extremely light expository. Extremely light. Jeremiah 5, 10 out of verse 18. Go, am I in 5? Am I in five? Yes, I am. Go ye upon her walls and destroy, but make not a full end. Take away her battlements, for they are not the Lord's. For the house of Israel and the house of Judah have dealt very treacherously against me, saith the Lord. They have belied the Lord and said, It is not he, neither shall evil come upon us, neither shall we see sword nor famine. Because you just believe and receive. You love your enemies. You forgive them and then go ridiculously back to the den of vipers. What's the mentality? Oh, you got to be like the world to win the world? And the prophet shall become wind. 
and the word is not in them. Thus shall it be done unto them. The truth is not antinomianism. Free grace is not the gospel. Free grace is heresy. Free grace is a byproduct of ecumenicalism, Vatican II. It is, its mother is Rome. Wherefore thus saith the Lord God of hosts, because ye speak this word. Behold, I will make my words in thy mouth fire, and this people were wood, and it shall devour them. Hmm. See, what we speak, brother, sister, is the truth. We speak his word. They don't like that. Lo, I will bring a nation upon you from far, O house of Israel, saith the Lord, it is a mighty nation. It is an ancient nation, a nation whose language thou knowest not. Neither understandest thou what they say. Rome is the perfection of the Babylonian religion. Okay? We've talked about this link for a video on that will be in the description box. The Roman Catholic religion began in Babylon. It was crafted in Egypt. It is perfected in Rome. So, instruction in righteousness, a nation upon you from far, like the Vatican, who are ba Baal, light representing the Babylonian religion their quiver is an open sepulcher they are almighty men and they shall eat up thine harvest and thy bread which thy sons and thy daughters should eat they shall eat up thy flocks and thine herds they shall eat up thy vines and thy fig trees. Oh, get the, get the references there. They shall impoverish thy fenced cities wherein thou trustest with the sword. Which sword? <laughs> the sword of the Spirit? Or the sword of Rome? Hold your place there. Go to Ezekiel 34. Ezekiel 34, 17 on the 19. And as for you, O my flock, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I judge between cattle and cattle, between the rams and the he-goats. Hmm. Seemeth it a small thing unto you to have eaten up the good pasture? But ye must tread down with your feet the residue of your pastures, and to have drunk of the deep waters? But ye must foul the residue with your feet. And as for my flock, they eat that which ye have trodden with your feet, and they drink that which ye have fouled with your feet. Christianity is being fed with the things that Satan has fouled with his feet. And then you got these guys who claim to believe the authorized version of the scriptures, but yet unstable. Given are, are moved by every wind of doctrine stable souls wanting to you know gossip in every new thing having another Jesus and another gospel verse 19 oh wait uh, verse 18 excuse me in Jeremiah 5 nevertheless in those days said the Lord I will not make a full end with you 
The hope is that some will get out of it instead of continually going back to it. Now skip a little and go to verses 21 on to verse 31. Hear now this, O foolish people, and without understanding, who say in your heart there is no God, but you yourself, and no understanding, departing from evil. Surrounding yourself by free gracers, willfully having fellowship with universalists, no understanding departing from evil. Which have eyes and see not. Which have ears and hear not. Fear ye not me, saith the Lord. Will ye not tremble at my presence? Oh, you will eventually. All you heretics. And see what the antinomianist, Catholic, there is no fear of God before their eyes. Which have placed the sand for the bound of the sea by a perpetual decree that it cannot pass it. And though the waves thereof toss themselves, yet can they not prevail. Though they roar, yet can they not pass over it. This iniquity will be in you until you die, as we already looked at. That's, that ought to scare the hell out of you. But this people hath a revolting and rebellious heart. They are revolted and gone. Neither say they in their heart, let us now fear the Lord our God. That giveth rain both the former and the latter in his season. He reserveth unto us the appointed weeks of the harvest. Your iniquities have turned away these things and your sins have withholding good things from you for among my people are found wicked men as they feast along with you they lay wait as he that setteth snares they set a trap they catch men And you're okay with that. I know I said uh, verse 25, and I know we, we read um, for 21. I know that. I know that. Catch men. Set snares. Just like in Proverbs 7, a young man void of understanding and walketh by her house. And you've troubled your own house. And you've inherited the wind. As a cage full of birds. So are their houses full of deceit. Therefore they are become great. And waxen rich. And it, remember in Revelation chapter 18. Talking about the destruction of Rome. It's become the cage of uh of every hateful and foul bird. Verse 28. They are waxen fat. They shine. Yea, they overpass the deeds of the wicked. They judge not the cause. The cause of the fatherless. Yet they prosper. And the rights of the needy do they not judge. Shall I not visit for these... Shall I not visit for these things, saith the Lord? Shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? A wonderful, horrible thing is committed in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely, and the priests bear rule by their means. And my people love to have it so. And what will ye do in the end thereof? Look now at verses 5 on to verse 9 in Jeremiah 5. 
Listen, you know, Lord, before all this, I will get me to onto the great men, and will speak unto them, for they have known the way of the Lord, and the judgment of their God. But these, these great men, these great men who ought to know, but these have altogether broken the yoke and burst the bonds. Wherefore a lion and the devil as a roaring lion seeketh whom he or roameth about seeking whom he may devour. Wherefore a lion out of the forest shall slay them and a wolf of the evenings shall spoil them. A leopard the hireling fleeth when he seeth the wolf coming. The leopard indigenous unto Nimrod, Babylon. A leopard shall watch over their cities. Every one that goeth out then shall be torn in pieces. Because their transgressions are many and their backslidings are increased. How shall I pardon thee for this? Thy children have forsaken me and sworn by them that are no gods. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, the Trinity. When I have fed them to the full, he makes his son, S-U-N, to shine on the evil and the good. He gives you food. Then they committed adultery. And assembled themselves by troops in the harlots' houses. Self-explanatory. The harlots' houses. German Catholic. Lutheran. Non-denominational. Methodist. Episcopalian. Presbyterian. Baptist. Oh, Pentecost. Oh, did I say Catholic? What about antinomianist? What about King James Bible believing Christian? I guess Christ is divided. Yours, not the one of Scripture. They were as fed horses. In the morning, everyone neighed after his neighbor's wife. And be not as the horse or the mule who need to have be held, their mouth held in with bit and bridle. Need to grow up. Shall, not, shall I not visit for these things? Sat the Lord. Shall not my soul be avenged? such a nation as this. Deuteronomy 32. Deuteronomy 32. Verses 15 on to verse 18. Deuteronomy 32. Verses 15 on to verse 18. But Jeshurun, highly favored, waxed fat, kicked. Thou art waxen fat, thou art grown thick, thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook God which made him, and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit. With abominations provoked they him to anger. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God. To gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. Of that rock that begat thee, thou art unmindful, and hast forgotten God that formed. See, when you have idleness, when you have too much time on your hands, okay, 
when you have, when all you do is live online, and don't get out there. When all you do is seek to revel in some new thing. 2 Samuel chapter 11. Check this out. Here's an example of this. 2 Samuel 11. King David. King David. Verses 1 on verse 5. And it came to pass after the year was expired. At the time when kings go forth to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him, and all Israel, that they and they besieged the children of Ammon, and, and they destroyed, excuse me, the children of Ammon and besieged Rabbah. But David tarried still at Jerusalem. David should have gone with. Don't know what happened. I guess I've made it. I guess I've made it. I, I'm I'm king now. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna sit back and just enjoy it. And it came to pass in an even time. That David arose from off his bed. Uh, that's when you're supposed to go to bed. But he got up at night. Even time. Well, not really at night. That time between dusk and dawn kind of thing. Whatever. Okay? <clears throat> and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof, he saw a woman washing herself. And the woman was very beautiful to look upon. Having those wandering eyes when abundance of things have come upon you. And David sent and inquired after the woman. One said, Is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eli, Eliam, Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? David sent messengers and took her. And she came in unto him, and he lay with her. For she was purified from her uncleanness. And she returned unto her house. And the woman conceived and sent, told David, and said, I am a child. Uh-oh. Hmm. Hmm. Ezekiel 16. See, there are some people out there who have way too much time on their hands. Uh, a lot of these are these Jesuit coadjutors who... Do not rest unless they have caused mischief or caused some to fall. Making their own Jesuitical lists while pointing out others making lists themselves. It's full of wonder. See, we as saints, we have our times when it's just us and the Lord and we do this kind of things, but you know what? This idleness, we have to watch out for. Uh, Ezekiel 16, just two verses, 49 and 50. 16, verses 49 and 50. Ezekiel 16. Behold, this was the iniquity of, of thy sister Sodom. Pride, fullness of bread, and abundance of idleness, I-D-L-E, idleness was in her and in her daughters. Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy. Idleness. Abundance of bread. And they were haughty and committed an abomination before me. Therefore I took them away as I saw good. Isaiah 30. Verses 1 on to verse 7. Isaiah 30, verses 1 on to verse 7. This is the final warning that, you know, you can lead a horse to water, can't make him drink it. Isaiah 30, verses 1 on to verse 7. 
Woe to the rebellious children, saith the Lord, that take counsel, that take counsel but not of me, and that cover with the covering but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. They walk to go down into Egypt, and have not asked at my mouth, to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh, and to trust, and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. Instruction in righteousness, Egypt in this context likened unto that, the world, and Pharaoh likened unto the prince of the power of the air, the little g god of this world, Satan. Therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame, and the trust, the shadow of Egypt, your confusion. Strength of Pharaoh, Pharaoh. yea, hath God said, just believe and receive. Shadow of Egypt, the world, your confusion. Don't worry about it. Yeah, you're not bound to any law. <laughs> Morally, <laughs> there is no. You're the you're the king of your own castle. And God is not the author of confusion, by the way. For his princes were at Zoan, and his ambassadors came to Hanes. Or Haynes, excuse me. They were all ashamed of a people that could not profit them, nor be uh, and help, nor profit, but a shame and also a reproach. Dude, these people that you are consorting yourself with will eventually be to your shame. Hopefully you'll find that out before it's too late. The burden of the beasts of the south into the land of trouble and anguish. From whence come the young and the old lion, the viper and fiery serpent, fiery, fiery flying serpent. They will carry their riches upon the shoulders of young asses and their treasure upon the bunches of camels to a people that shall not profit them. For the Egyptians, for the Egyptians, shall help in vain. <laughs> and to no purpose. Therefore have I cried concerning this. Their strength is to sit still and be a keyboard warrior and gossip and do all this nonsense. But see, if you believe those people are your brethren, antinomianists, it's not really much that a saint, you know, people, you, you've heard the truth, you don't want it. <laughs> Yoking yourself up, you are the company you keep, okay? Be not uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14 on verse 18. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what this doesn't have a pronounce a pronunciation key. Okay? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? What agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God has said. I will dwell in them, and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. And I will receive you. And I will be a father unto you. And ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Verse 22 in 2 Peter chapter 2. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb. The dog is turned to his own vomit again. And the soul that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. 
Psalm 46, then we will be done. Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried, carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her. That right early. Heathen raged. Kingdoms were moved. He uttereth his voice. The earth melted. And of course, the heathen raged. The heathen raged. Oh, yeah, that's... Uh, Psalm 2. I was looking at the Proverbs. Psalm 2. Psalm 2. <laughs> Verses 1. On to verse oh, 6. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves. And the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. We don't want to be holding to what you're saying. We want to believe and receive and live without any moral compass or whatever whatsoever except what comes out of our own heart. Live it up. Just eat and drink for tomorrow you die. Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath, and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree. The Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Let's read the whole thing. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them at, with a rod of iron, thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise now therefore, O ye kings, be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear, and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the sun, lest he be angry, and ye perish from the way, when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are, are, are all they that put their trust in him. Back to Psalm 46, verse 7. Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Come behold the works of the Lord. What desolations hath he made in the earth? He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Salah. That is going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching this. If you do, please take these things to heart and consider what was said to you today. There will be several links for you in the description box. Thank you so much, brethren. We love you. Do pray for us. We need all the prayers we can get as we pray for so many of you. We love you. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.